All right, welcome. Welcome to the Action Leadership Group. I am the Executive Director, Reginald Griffin. And without further delay, again, welcome for those who are planning on joining and those here now. Our vision is to reform K-12 education, and it begins with relevant professional development on both the, at the, both the school and district levels. Our professional development is designed to identify gaps and opportunities to strengthen policies and procedures to support students in all K-12 schools. Also, we believe that our company's expertise will support individual schools and districts by helping to foster positive relationships with students and parents. Our strategies include culturally relevant pedagogy, restorative practices, interventions developed uh, developing safe places, instructional strategies, and culturally and re uh, religious guides. Please visit us at our website, actsomeleadershipgroup.org, on our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want, if you want, wish to contact us immediately, uh, email us at info at actsomeleadershipgroup.org. We have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful event today at the Supper Club. And um, speaking of supper, Miss Askew, what are you eating today? I am eating um, chicken stir fry when okay. I, after this, yes. I had some uh, chicken wings. And let's see what else. Okay, today, uh, our discussion is school stakeholder wellness support. How do students, parents, faculty, and staff members thrive and survive a school year? Uh, without further delay, Ms. Askew, please introduce our dynamic, our dynamic presenter today. And we hope we can continue to recruit her backward several times as a contributor. So I'm putting her on blast right now, but without further delay, <laughs> please introduce our presenter. Yes, sir. Um, we are blessed to have uh, Alexandria Rosa. She's an educator and holistic nurse from Lorraine, Ohio. She's been in healthcare for over 15 years, is completing her doctoral degree in nursing. She's also the founder and CEO of Spice You and Spice Body, a minority and woman-owned small business providing social and emotional learning strategies and support for teachers, students, healthcare professionals, and social workers. Specializing in helping caring professionals live healthier, more balanced lives by providing tools and strategies that work for them. She offers specialty clinics, individual and group coaching programs. And we will put her contact info um, in the chat and on Facebook later after this presentation. Uh, Alex, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Glad you're here. Glad to have you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, <laughs> for sure. So you want me to jump right into it? Sure. All right. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And all right. So let me put this onto a slideshow. All right. So, like they introduced me, my name's Alex. I'm a nurse. I am an educator, and I love all things holistic health and wellness. And I really was very honored to put this presentation together for everybody. And I really think that teacher wellness and student wellness is so important. And I am both, I'm an educator and a student, and I know how hard it can be to balance both of those roles and to be successful and to do it in a healthy way. So I definitely wanted to shed some light on this and talk about some personal development and some things that we can really do to survive and thrive, especially in these really challenging times that we have now with the pandemic and with a lot of the stress and anxiety that both that people are feeling on both ends, that teachers are feeling and students, parents, families, school systems, everything. So I was really happy to put this together. And so definitely when I do my presentations, I like to have some involvement from people who are watching. So feel free to drop messages in the chat. Um, 
or if you want to say something, definitely leave a message that you want to say something. I definitely like a lot of the engagement in presentations. So what we're going to learn about today is what is self-nurturing and why it's important for student and teacher personal development, reasons you might not be putting yourself first, and really how to nurture yourself, be filled with more energy, and finally come first. So what exactly is self-nurturing? I know we talk about self-nurturing, we talk about self-care. What do you really think that is for you? And I would love to get your opinion on what you think that is. So if you would want to leave your message and kind of let us know what your thoughts are about that. That would be really appreciated. So Gloria, if you see any pop through, will you let me know if anybody leaves any messages? Oh, I think I see. I don't know if I can, if I can look and see what they're finding time to enjoy your interests. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So how I kind of look at it is activities that we carve out time for that support us in a holistic way. So I love all things holistic, health, wellness. I love things that are alternative medicine and complementary therapy. I love meshing all of those things together. And when we can really look at ourselves through a holistic lens, I really think that we are better humans, we're better partners, we're better leaders, we're better parents, we're better caregivers, we're better students when we are practicing self-nurturing. And we know that we have better job satisfaction, better productivity, better outcomes. We have more money. We're financially more secure. We have more harmony, more joy, more love, more vitality, and more self-worth when we are supporting ourselves in this way. And so I want to take a moment to talk about teacher personal development. I'm going to bring y'all on this side over here. So teacher personal development. So I know a lot of uh, places will focus on professional development, but I really think that we need to focus on personal development as well, because that's such a huge part of how we perform professionally. And so when I think about personal development, I think about developing the necessary life skills that can help teachers grow in and outside of the profession. So how we're performing in the schools and then how we're performing outside in our lives and what are we doing to contribute to our personal development. And because we know that our roles can be affected by our personal life, we really need to work on developing holistic strategies and skills to support a more balanced personal and professional life. And so personal development is really a powerful tool to reach a well-defined, balanced, and healthy sense of self as teachers. And I'm all about things that are well-balanced and that are healthy and sustainable. So since personal development impacts teachers' attitudes, relationships, health, and social interactions, the necessity of personal development is really crucial to enhancing our school systems and to retaining our teachers. And I really feel that teaching is based on interpersonal, so interpersonal relationship to relationship and intrapersonal communication. So how we are talking to ourselves, both of which are supported through self-nurturing practices. And if we're going to look at it from the student aspect, student personal development is really helping them develop necessary life skills that can help them grow in and outside of the classroom. Because students' school performance can be affected by their personal life, we need to develop holistic strategies and skills to support a more balanced personal and academic life. And personal development is a really powerful tool to reach a well-defined, balanced, and healthy sense of self as a student. And one of the things that I really wanted to focus on with this was, you know, being a young adult, navigating life, and we've all been there, right? It can be very challenging. And even into adulthood, that still can be very challenging. And you add to that being a child or a teenager or a young adult, Facing school, life, a pandemic, maybe not coming from the healthiest, most supportive, stable home environment, and really life can seem very intimidating, impossible, there's no hope, why even try? And the challenges that we have now that we're facing are really unlike anything that we've ever had to deal with as educators and as students ever before. And so I really feel that 
having some really solid personal development for our students is really going to be key for their success going forward. And supporting personal development from the point of entry onward. So as soon as they start entering school, we should be normalizing the self-care, the self-nurturing, the self-development, and using holistic approaches to do this for every student. And I know we've personally had conversations about this where you know, holistic, like people don't even know what holistic is in some neck of the woods. Like we really need to normalize and make that information available to all our students, no matter their background, no matter what their aspirations might be, whatever their educational needs might be, we need them to be resilient to the many personal and academic challenges that they are going to face. And we can definitely start doing this. There is no time better than to start right now. So some reasons why we might not be saying yes to these self-nurturing holistic behaviors is we don't have enough time and time is a huge factor everybody says there's not enough time and or you might not have enough energy time and energy kind of go hand in hand so we don't have enough time or energy for the many roles that we have or we're too stressed and we're too anxious or overwhelmed by daily life and so that will really stop us in our tracks from trying to do anything we're not going to be successful it's not going to work for me so-and-so tried it and it didn't work for them, so I'm not gonna do it. We all know that everybody has something different that they're good at, that they enjoy, that works for them. What works for one person doesn't always work for somebody else. So we need to work on how to develop those individualized things that so people can be successful. And maybe we don't deserve it. And this is a huge one. We're not worthy. The self-worth is not there. We don't love ourselves. We don't care enough about, our, about ourselves. And it's like, where did we get this idea from? Who told us this big lie that now we are believing for the rest of our lives? So we really want to change the way we're thinking about that, interrupt those thought patterns, get some new stories playing in people's heads is what we need to do. And lastly, it's selfish. You're not putting yourself first. You're always putting yourself last because you're told, and I know this is a huge cultural thing for a lot of, for a lot of people, is that it's selfish to put yourself first, to want to do things and take time for yourselves. And in reality, it's not. We know that we need to breathe in that air, that oxygen for ourselves so that we can be able to breathe life into others, be able to serve them and help them. We need to take that time. So how can we start finally saying yes to ourselves? And so I'm gonna go through some like practical things that you can use that you can do every day that can start getting you on the track to doing this. And the things I'm gonna talk about are definitely stuff that you can do as an individual, but definitely things that I would encourage you to do with your classroom, with your students, with your families, with your partners, like it's, they're great activities that you can start doing every single day. So one of the things you can start doing is journaling, doing gratitude journaling, practicing gratitude, setting boundaries, and setting priorities for yourself. And you want to make yourself a priority. You want to put yourself into your schedule. And I talk a lot about, um, on my platform, I talk a lot about time management and productivity and different tools that I use for that. And I always make sure that I have myself in my schedule and I encourage people to do the same. Where are you in your schedule? We put everybody else in the schedule. We gotta put you in that schedule. And you can do a time and energy audit. So where are you spending your time? Where are you expending your energy? You can really look at your routines and your habits and start developing some new ones and practice time blocking. Time blocking is a really great technique that I teach for planning out your day and scheduling it. You can use it for almost anything. You can really time block pretty much anything that you want. And you really want to work on breaking old habits and thought patterns. You wanna look at your accomplishments and really examine your relationships. And I included a bunch of resources that you guys can definitely pass out to everybody. One of the ones that I'm gonna go through though is the self-nurture first aid kit because that's a really good activity you can do and that I'll talk with that one. But the accomplishments, the affirmations, the six words, the journal, journal prompts, those are all ways that you can start journaling, practicing gratitude, really start introducing new thought patterns into your brain, into how you're thinking, into your story so you can start telling a new story for yourself. 
Um, this is the self nurture first aid kit. And this is like one of my favorite activities to do. And I've talked about it in a couple, couple different clinics that I've done. And I've gotten a lot of good feedback. I had one person who was, uh, she does a lot of volunteer work. So she's gonna do a whole volunteer activity around this. I had another woman who does women's ministry and she's gonna do it with her women's ministry group. I had another teacher, she's gonna be doing it with her class. So this, um, it goes step-by-step step how you can create your own self-nurture first aid kit. And this is really good to have with you so that you have something solid, something concrete to go to when you might be feeling stressed out or overwhelmed, or you just don't know where to start, or you need some inspiration. It walks you step by step how you can really set this up for yourself. And like I said, it's great for you to have. It's great to have with your class, with your students, with your kids. It's really great. I know a lot of people with anxiety or sometimes panic attacks, sometimes you really need something solid to ground yourself to. And having this self-nurture first aid kit is really great. You can put your affirmations in there. You can put pictures, you can put inspiration. You can put some aromatherapy. You can put touch therapy, you can put all kinds of good stuff in this uh, first aid kit. And I walk you step-by-step step how to do it and what to put in it. So I'm going to run to the chat real quick because I see two messages. Yes, exactly. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> I have been thinking about looking at the chats. All right. So we're going to do some quick work here. So I would love to know what, so talking about accomplishments. So one of the activities that I love to have people do, especially when they are going through a lot of self-doubt or they're just feeling like they're just not up to the, you know, up to the challenge anymore. They're really questioning themselves. I have them do this activity where they write out all of their accomplishments. And so I really want you to think back in all the things that you've done in your life, big, small, whatever is important to you. I'd love to know what three things that you are super proud of. Like, what are your top three accomplishments? I would love for you to either say it or to write it, it would be great. And this activity is really powerful. It seems really simple, but it's definitely very powerful. When you get it down in black and white and you're looking <clears throat> at everything that you've done, it's really powerful. Being a mom, your education and marriage, not in that order. <laughs> marriage and family, your career. Yeah, definitely. And I if even encourage you. Us, I'm sorry, Alex. I'm if you're joining us from Facebook, please go ahead and you can interact through there. I have access to those comments as well. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And I definitely would encourage you when you have more time and you're sitting out doing this to really think, like really think deeply about all of these accomplishments that you have had for sure. So in talking about our self-nurture first aid kit, I kind of talked about, I like to put inspiration. I like to put some type of aromatherapy. I like to put some type of um, journaling, gratitude. I like to put those types of things in my self-nurture first aid kit. So I'm kind of curious to know what you might put in your self-nurture <coughs> first aid kit. You had to have something that you knew that you could go to that had like a book or a picture. Pictures are great to put in your first aid kit, definitely. What would you put in there? What three things would you put in there? Oh, nice. I seen that message from Facebook. That's great. Oh yeah, that's great. Cards from students and staff. That's perfect. Newspaper articles, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, when you're able to look at the first aid kit and look at all the different pieces and parts, it's really, it's really nice thing to have. Definitely. Oh, how can I go back? Oh, I probably can't. That's all right. All right. So um, hobbies and interests is another thing that you should definitely look at. And so what excites you? What do you want to try? What did you used to try? And this is good for people who um, kind of had are, are kind of like questioning themselves, like, who am I? They don't have any direction anymore. They're like, what's next for me? I'm at a crossroads. This is a really great thing to think about is going back to your hobbies and your interests. And 
this also goes back to carving out time for yourself and using the time blocking and usually using the scheduling to schedule yourself in so you can actually have time to do these things because often this stuff gets cut all the time because we're always making room for everything else. And these are the things that are really gonna help keep you grounded and help keep you balanced and encouraging your students and your family and your kids and each other to keep up with the things that you actually like doing are so important to, have you, um, to having a more balanced life. So this also goes to, it's easier to love what you do than to do what you love. And I have a lot of people who question themselves and question their careers now. And it really is, it's easier to find purpose and meaning in your everyday life than to try to find what you love. It's, let's find love in what we're doing right now in the moment. And a really great way to do that is to looking is to, for looking at your purpose and looking at your goals and your values and your strengths. And there's definitely lots of exercises that you can do around this and exercises that I have people run through that help you really develop your strengths and identify your values and your goals and what your purpose is to help bring this to reality. And some alternative and complementary therapies that we can do are, everybody knows exercise, we can do meditation, we can do breathing, we can do aromatherapy, sound and music therapy, animal therapy. You can definitely tap into that self-nurture first aid kit for some inspiration. These are all definitely things that we can do with our families, with our kids, with our students to break up the day, to help them focus on themselves, to help them spend time on themselves. And, you know, they have that um, animal therapy dogs that walk around and doing some sound therapy, sound baths are really awesome that you can do just to help people focus, get in the mood to study, to focus. These things really help. And last but not least that I want to talk about are is a support system. So you don't want to isolate yourself and you definitely want to ask for help and you want to create space to do this and you want to have a safety net you want to have communication and we really need to look at our classrooms as being a safe space very judgment free very welcoming you want it to be like a wellness ecosystem you want each classroom should like have its own flavor of what's going on and how that class functions because each classroom is going to be different and with a different leader and with different people in it. And so it's going to be its own little ecosystem. So no two classes are going to be the same. And it's really playing off of the strengths of the students that are in the class and the teacher and all those dynamics that are together. And if we can really create a positive support system, because we know that sometimes when kids are coming to school, that's their only safe place. That's their only place where they feel welcomed, where they can be themselves. And that's what we really want and want to strive for is that kind of environment that we want to bring kids into. And also you want to come work at a place that's like that as well, right? We want to come to a place where we can be ourselves, where we can be free to teach how we want to teach and to be the person that we want to be, be the professional that we want to be. So definitely creating this type of culture and we're working and in our classrooms is very important to self-nurturing and to being more holistic and helping people get through the stress and the anxiety of every day. And so that is pretty much kind of wrapping up my presentation. So I really would love to know like what your biggest kind of aha moment was from today, if you would like to write that for me if you had a good takeaway from tonight or you can tell us one thing that you're going to take action on after this that you'd love to try i really like that you said that every classroom is a different dynamic those aren't your exact words but every yeah. classroom should be a safety net and it should also you know you build those relationships and they should not all look the same they they definitely should um, be different, but it also mirrors what our students will see in the outside world, the different communities and how they can fluctuate between each one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely. I, I had a, uh, for years, my last school, well, it's almost like every school has done this. Uh, you know, when you leave someone, they, they will compile a list of letters and, and cards and pictures from students, faculty, and staff. And for me, uh, it was interesting because those are some of the things you talked about. 
but also those things are a reminder when you do have a bad day, when you do have a, a, a bad few minutes, it can, it helped me refocus and, 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 and really, and realign my mission and why I'm here. And, and, and it, it just like you said, it's, it, it's like a trophy. It, it, it reminds you of your successes. It reminds you of the great times. And, and, and so it, it is a pep. It does provide a pep and a step. And I've, uh, so when some of our kids who've been in trauma, I've been asking them to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. Kids who've been who've gotten in trouble before, that's their assignment. Either you can get a suspension for this long, or you can get it cut back dramatically. But this is what I need when you come back. Let's fix it. But also, right. here are some next steps so you can realize who you are and real and realign to where you need to be in your goal. Uh, we also do vision boards at school, so it, it's it was interesting you said that. I thought I was. You know, I thought I was doing some California stuff, but now I got the 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 soon to be good doctor telling me that that those are best practices. Sure, it yeah. it surely is. Yeah, the vision boards are they're they're like gold. Once once you get the students on board to do that, um, it was it's something that was never taught to me, and I had, I learned it in my adult life, and so now that is a very important component to our program, our vision boards reflecting. Um, we're about to begin journaling um, with our students. Um, and so just having that, that intentional practice of, of looking back and looking forward, you know, and, and being able to know where you're going and, and what you can change to get there. But, you know, if you, if you don't have it in your viewpoint, then you can't make actions to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I always encourage, like, I'm not sure how, and it depends on how your classroom is set up, but if like you could have one classroom and you can have all the students come together and create a vision board for their class and what they would love to have for their classroom, what kind of culture, what kind of vision they would like to have, what kind of mission they would like to have for their class and for their year. I think that's such an amazing way to bring the kids and the teacher, everybody together to do something like that and to really set the year off right instead of having all that chaos and stuff like that can just bring so many people together in such a powerful way and just to know for the students that my teacher cares about me this much that she wants to know or he wants to know what do I care about what do I want to learn about how do I want to feel when I come to school, like that's so powerful for kids to be heard and even adults too. you, you, you know to feel that way when you go to where you're working and to be feel like you are seen and heard in that way in such a valuable way that's really powerful and we you know we talked about this yesterday um you know as we ramped up and geared up for tonight you know when people look at you or people look at you know uh miss askew or myself they don't understand what it took to get sometimes to where you are and often people don't forget because you're, you may be in a leadership position that, you know, you actually have a story too to tell. And so mm-hmm. what you're describing, it, it actually humanizes everybody from, from the child to the staff, to the, to our custodians, everybody's a human now. And I think that the, those, those narratives are extremely important uh, to, to get to that level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it can be it can be tricky because you do want to have those boundaries in place, those professional boundaries, but you do on the flip side, and this is where sometimes I get caught up in my own teaching, where sometimes I I know for sure I've had other educators be like, Alex, hold up, you're like telling way too much info. But <laughs> it's like I I can't like help myself because I see myself and what the students are going through and I feel what they're going through and I don't want them to feel like they're alone. I don't want them to give up. And so I do share a lot about my personal journey and what I go through and what I see in them that I saw in myself and how they can work through what they're working through. And I know sometimes I really, I'm like real close on that line, but it's really the only way really to humanize who you are. Yes, you're the teacher, but you're still a person. You're still that person that that student trusts and you have to have that relationship. And those relationships are just everything. And I, and especially now 
relationships are so fragile sometimes and we and now I know we just we are just holding tight to everybody that we have and really valuing every minute and every second with those around us and this I really feel like we have these students are in our lives for a reason you know I never believe that things are in our coincidence I never believe that things are always meant to be for a reason and so that's why I feel like I have to just use every opportunity just in a, such a special way with these students. And you know what, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I've, I've had, um, you know, students myself that were having a bad day and I let them talk to some staff members and they come back to the office like, you know what, I had a bad day, but after hearing what Miss so-and-so went through, I kind of realized I can deal with my stuff a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, because again, often people think that, you know, there weren't struggles to get where you are, you just, you know, and so, cause they don't, they, you know, it, it looks easy on the outside, I guess, mm -hmm. but yeah. So just, I, we please keep telling your story and, and mm -hmm. because, you know, a, a lot of people, you, you may motivate that student a little bit more. And mm -hmm. because if, if you can do it and overcome some of the struggles that you had and, and, and yeah, I, I mean, cause I, I'm sure during your journey, you was like, man, I just can't do this. You know, this is too oh. much. So how did you fight through it? You know, and, and so those yeah. things are important here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like we were talking. Yeah, for, I have for sure had many of those moments and many, a lot of that I've gone through. And I, it is, it's knowing that, it's really knowing that deeper purpose and not even so much like having a passion because the purpose comes first. And is what I feel. That's just my opinion is the purpose comes first, like to know that there's something for you. And that's what really has like driven me for so much of my career and just kept me going. Like, I didn't know exactly where I was going, but I knew there was something else for me. And then now that I'm in this educational environment and teaching, and I just really feel like this is like, I feel like, mm, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it really feels so good to finally be here. But then I'm constantly, since I'm still in school and <laughs> still going through things, it's still a, definitely a process, but definitely it, it gets more clear when you really have that purpose behind you and really know your why. And you're really clear on that and have a lot of those systems and those strategies in place to kind of get over those bad days, get over those humps. It definitely makes it a more enjoyable process. <laughs> we actually have a university here in Georgia that has a really great program with their in-service teachers. And um, it's called the SPARK program. And their whole basis of the program is talks about our, our, our lives and our narratives are all part of a cosmos. It's not a straight line. It's mm -hmm. what happens you know, is circular and it's all related. And um, they integrate, you know, students at, and specifically at-risk students with in-service teachers. And they each just spend time giving value to each other's stories so that they can build relationships on top of giving other experiences as well. So that, you know, just to change behaviors and routines. But I think it's a, it's a great way of showing teachers quickly how to, how to build those relationships within their classroom as well. The other thing I wanted to say was your time blocking. Cause when you and I, we first met, you were uh, talking about time blocking all the time. And, and it has helped me. It helps, you know, when I say, you know, from this time to this time, this is what I'm doing. And this is the only thing I'm doing. Um, and, and it's going to help me and it's going to make you want to be around me a little bit more. <laughs> And yes. I'll, I'll become a little bit more pleasant if you let me do this during this time, you know, um, but the time blocking thing is valuable. It is valuable. Um, there's things, you know, I, I don't have enough time for like riding my bike and things like that. So if I just look at the calendar and say, I can do this now and, and it doesn't matter, nothing's going to stop me from doing that right then and there. It really has helped my moods. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's what I try to say. It seems like it's just a simple concept, like, oh, I'm time blocking and it's scheduling and it's so boring and blah, blah, blah. But just the impact it has on so many parts of your life and people don't realize that's the stress and all the stuff that's bubbling up underneath you that comes out in those like, you know, sharp little comments and attitude and 
having a bad day and being stressed out. It's just because of this. And if you can just use the time blocking and it just, it changes everything. It does. It puts you in a more positive headspace. You are more pleasant to be around for sure. You enjoy the time that you have when you're in the moment and you're not worried about the next thing that you're maybe not going to get to. No, you don't need to worry about any of that because you have kind of everything set out. Yeah, I love it. You can use time blocking for anything and everything <laughs> in your life for sure. You see Trina's um, comment in Facebook. What happened? What'd she say? She says time blocking, such a novel idea. I love it. <laughs> and, and speaking yeah. of time blocking, this block, this segment is sponsored by our wonderful sponsor, Southern Cup Coffee Roasters. And our uh, Miss Rosa, she'll have some delicious coffee delivered to her home pretty soon. Mm. So we'd like to thank yes. our sponsor for this time block. Um, uh, but I will, I do have a serious <laughs> question now, though. We did get our sponsors, our sponsors some love, so thank you. Um, but we we often talk about self. Uh, I, I've heard of self care today. You know, today was new. It, it, you call it self nurture. Um, mm -hmm. When does when do, how, how can we advise people to go beyond to a uh, professional nurture or professional care? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important overall, like my background is I'm a registered nurse. So I'm always thinking medical kind of in the forefront and assessment and patients. So that's like kind of where my brain is anyways. So I'm always, always advocating no matter what to have a good relationship with your physician. We're going to get kind of medical here, but having a good relationship with a physician, with a nurse, nurse practitioner, whoever it is that you can go to, that you can see on a regular basis, like let's be honest, at least once a year, please <laughs> go see somebody. So you have a baseline of your health, because when you go, they're going to ask you about all the parts of your life, all your systems, even your mental health. And they've even gotten so very specific, like there's been so many initiatives to get into mental health now. So they're going to ask you about all of that. So that's kind of like your first line of defense. And you want to be honest. And that's why you want to have a good relationship with your doctor. And if you are noticing that you are definitely being distracted all the time and you are having unpleasant thoughts and you are having panic attacks and that's a real cause for concern. And you know, if you are not feeling right and if people are making comments to you and you're just not feeling yourself, talk to your physician and see what they can recommend for you and kind of where they want you to start. Now, I will have to say that I have definitely been on medication for anxiety, for depression. I dealt with a lot of postpartum depression after I, I have three children and especially it got worse with each one. And especially after my youngest, he's four now, I had really, I, my postpartum depression was so bad with him. So debilitating. So, so bad. Definitely had to go on medication. Um, and I was on that for a while. And it finally got to a point where I was like, I need to start doing some things for myself to kind of get myself out of this funk. And a lot of it was hormonal, but a lot of it was just like bad habits and bad routines and bad behaviors that I had. And so I really had to rethink how I was going to do things, how I was going to use my time, what I was going to do with myself. And so once I really started changing, I did a lot of mindset work. I'm very big into mindset and to, um, affirmations and to um manifestation oh i hear talking oh was that somebody talking well oh, okay <laughs> so i think it I'm was really background big. you're good okay i was like what's that so yeah, I'm really big into positive affirmations, manifestation, mindset. I'm into all of that. And because definitely I love alternative medicine and complementary and all that stuff. So, but it definitely has value. It's definitely proven to have an impact on your health. So I would say that there is a time for you to do things on your own with your own mindset and your own habits and your own routines, definitely because you do play a part in it. But there is that other part where if you are seriously thinking about harming yourself or harming somebody else, or if you're just feeling very sad, very down, depressed for a lengthy period of time, 
then definitely, yes, girl, do those manifestations. They for real work. <laughs> um, that is when it really is time to at least talk with your doctor and get a little bit more in depth. And you can definitely, that's why we have psychiatrists. That's why we have psychologists. That's why we have counselors. There's all people that are professionals in their field that can help you dig a little bit deeper. And you always want to come with an open mind and be very honest with them and see what their recommendations are. And I'm always a big fan of getting a second opinion or a third opinion if you really want one and just seeing what options are out there. And I'm big on combining traditional medicine with like Eastern medicine. There's so many different practices out there and there's so many different ways that you can approach your health. But really, if you are having a lot of difficulties, just start, have a good relationship with your doctor and start there. That's what I always recommend. You've got three different folks from, from America here, right? You, you have a Puerto mm -hmm. Rican in the room, you got a, a Mexican American in the room, got an African American in the room. How do we normalize mental health supports in our community? By just talking about it. I think we really need to just talk, start talking about it and just sharing our own personal stories and being open to hearing what other people have to say and their stories. I think that listening has is such an important thing that a lot of people just want to be heard. And a lot of those misunderstandings and a lot of those judgments and assumptions come from, we're just not listening to what the other person is saying. And I think if we can do that, start listening, listening to what our kids are saying, listening to what our coworkers are saying. And sometimes it's not even what we're verbally saying, it's just what we are, our body language and our nonverbals. And so in nursing, we're always, I am always talking about, and I always teach my students, pay attention to your, to your patient just by looking at them. And there's a lot you can tell just by looking at your patient. And I think we can do that too. You can tell a lot about people sometimes just by how they're acting. So if you kind of notice that something might be a little bit off with so-and-so that you see every day, be a little bit curious. You don't have to be super nosy, but ask a little bit of question, let them know that you actually care and hear what they have to say, hear what might be going on with them and just kind of start that dialogue. And I think that's just one really simple way to normalize it because I know we were talking about like when I was growing up, I'm Puerto Rican, when we were growing up, did nobody talk about holistic nothing? Did nobody know <laughs> what that was? You know, I would be talking about yoga and being a vegetarian and my parents were looking at me crazy because I wasn't talking about rice and beans and pork chops. So <laughs> like... <laughs> It, it, and it is, it's just, you just have to normalize it and talk about it and present it and have those options out there. Like, hey, this is out there that you can learn about this and you can learn about this and just making the information more available to other people and sharing it on whatever platform that you have, you definitely should be sharing that. What you said about body language, just that's the, that's the first thing we do every morning is, you know, the students are coming in and, and we know the rush of getting ready in the morning or, you know, a frustrated parent or, or something. We look for those body languages of our students and, and we try to, you know, if we see something that's different than um, little Susie coming in every day, it, you know, she's usually happy and skipping in the door and, and one day her head is hung and, and she's, you know, she doesn't look very happy at all. Then we pull her aside before she goes and in, even goes into a classroom where there could be a potential problem or, or things like that. And just let them have the time to reset, talk about it if they want to talk about it. We don't, you know, force any of that. Um, but we do allow them a safe space to be able to discuss it. And we even give them a choice of who they want to speak to. Um, you know, cause it doesn't necessarily always have to be me or, or Mr. Griffin, you know, um, there, there may be someone else that they feel safer with or, or feel more comfortable talking about certain things with, um, but definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm reading Ms. Trice's comment. She says, ask you is always curious when she thinks or perceives your body language is off. <laughs> Yes, I'm not afraid to ask. <laughs> yeah. And that's my job in the morning. I'm literally the greeter. I'm like the bouncer, but I'm I'm like the positive bouncer. So like if you get yeah. out of that car slamming doors, oh, you gotta stand by me and I gotta talk to your parent right then. And you know, if uh -huh. you, just like Ms. Askew said, if you know you you speak and 
hug me every morning. And these are, you know, these are everything from middle school. These are middle school and high school kids. And then you come in there, you barely want to look at me. We have to talk. And, and it's a reset. And I think everybody needs that. And it builds so much capital uh, with mm-hmm. you and the, the child and the parents because people know you're invested in that human being and, and they're just not a number. Yeah, you're just not another face passing through in the crowd. Yeah, when definitely people take the time to notice when they take the time to know what your name is. That's another huge one. You know somebody's name. I mean, that's amazing to be seen like that. Yeah, and definitely just, yeah, you notice those little things. You notice those little things. Yeah, and just to have somebody know that you saw that and you noticed that about them, that can be huge. That can just make or break somebody's day right there. Well, you know, just like I, I, before you start, I told everybody you were dynamic and this is going to be an awesome presentation. W- to, to sum everything up, we, do you want to say anything else? Because I, we really do appreciate you coming today. Oh, no, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. No, I just, I just feel like what I have noticed in my teaching that I've been doing is, and the difference between when I was a student and now that I'm a teacher, like, just to have people really pay attention to you and really care about what is going on with you in your life, because maybe you didn't come to clinical totally prepared or you're a little off or whatever it might be, just to know that, that your teacher is a human being too, and that they see that and that they recognize that and that there is time to talk and to get to know people. And that's just one of my biggest things and just helping give people the resources that they need so that they can rise to the occasion because ain't nobody going to know everything and we can't expect people to know everything we have to give them the tools so that they can be successful and that's my my other my other piece of advice for teachers too so miss askew i just want to add to that that we also don't know what we don't know Mm-hmm. And so taking that time for the conversation and hearing and listening and not having all the solutions, but listening openly because there, there's a complete different perspective. Um, and that that's something that it takes a minute to build in your toolbox, but the faster that we can help our students understand that, you know, the less um, obstacles they'll have in their twenties. And wouldn't we like to have had less obstacles in our twenties? Yeah, honey, carry it through. Just learn it now and carry it on through so that you yeah. can teach others. And that, and that includes our teachers because, you know, we we started out, uh, we were talking about trauma-sensitive schools and we started with our staff. You know, these are the questions we were asking our staff because see, if you're bringing these things into the school, then how are you diffusing yourself as well? How are you, you know, what is your, you know, how do you self-care? Those are some of the questions that we ask. So um, mm-hmm. it is a two-way street when you deal with human beings in education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's 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 the other huge part as a teacher that I've seen, like teachers are coming to school stressed out, overwhelmed with home situations, and they're dealing with home situations just like everybody else is during the pandemic. They got to find somebody to watch their kids. They got to find somebody to watch maybe their mom or their dad if they're a caretaker of, of their parents or grandparents or in-laws. Everybody has different challenges. We just have to meet everybody where they are and give them the tools so that they can't overcome all these things. Well, I like, uh, again, uh, outstanding. I, we knew it was going to be outstanding. And I, and I hope our, the folks who came on today saw that too. So thank you so much, uh, Ms. Rosa, for coming and supporting Axum Leadership Group. And we look forward to seeing you in the spring and in the summer for our next meetup, our next yes. Zoom. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, I loved I love being here and thank you. I love everything that you guys are doing. And I, t- I told Gloria many times <laughs> when, I t- when I message her, just amazing things. I love it. Cool beans. Well, that's it for us, guys. We're going to sign out now. Uh, again, we appreciate everything. Uh, we'll see you next month at the Supper Club. We're trying to change education. One human being at a time. Thank you guys so much. And have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.